Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to be evaluating an infinite sum with a variable. We have 2 plus 3x over 2 plus 4x squared over 3 plus 5x cubed over 4, where the coefficients are 2 over 1, 3 over 2, 4 over 3, 5 over 4, so on and so forth. Hopefully you get the idea. And we're going to be evaluating the sum in terms of x. Let's start with something we know. The coefficients are kind of weird, aren't they? So let's start with something we know, such as 1 plus x plus x squared plus x cubed, so on and so forth. This is equivalent to 1 over 1 minus x when x is the absolute value of x is less than 1. Remember? Of course, we have the same requirement for this problem in order for this to converge. What is this expression? This is an infinite geometric series, a very important identity which is used uh, for many different identities, proofs, and stuff like that. So now, let's go ahead and integrate both sides. And we've done something like this before, remember? Okay, so if you integrate this side by side, let's go ahead and show our work here integrate this and integrate that and then we're gonna get something like this the integral of one think about it the derivative of which function is equal to one the answer is x right obviously and you can basically use the power rule for example if you're integrating x to the power one all you have to do is add the increase the exponent by one and divide by the new exponent. So it's going to be x to the second divided by 2, and then x squared, you're going to increase the exponent and divide by that number, and so on and so forth. That's what you're going to be doing. Okay, this is good, but what about the right-hand side? Well, if you had 1 over x, its integral would be ln x, right, or the absolute value of x, but we have 1 minus x. If you had 1 over negative x, it, it would be ln of, would it be ln of negative x? So you have to think about whose derivative is going to be 1 over 1 minus x. And you're going to use the ln function again because x and 1 minus x are not that different when they're in the exponent, uh, when they're in the uh, denominator, of course. So this will be ln of this because its derivative is going to bring in a negative 1 only. So we're basically going to be putting ln of the absolute value of 1 minus x with a minus sign. And the minus sign is needed because we have a negative x. You could also do the conversion like suppose negative x is equal to u and negative dx is du or dx is negative du. That's also going to bring an extra negative sign. Make sense? You could even set this whole thing to u and then go from there as well. So this is our integral or antiderivative, but there are infinitely many antiderivatives. So we have to add a constant to make up for that, okay? So one thing to keep in mind is we can actually get rid of C or find out what it is. C is a constant, but if we don't know what it is, then it's kind of ambiguous, right? Well, sort of. But we don't need any initial conditions for this because nothing was given. But one thing you can do is uh, these are functions, right? So we can replace X with one on both sides. So for X equals one, the left-hand side equals all the ones being added, right? I'm sorry, I meant x equals 0. I don't know why I used x equals 1. That would be infinity. For x equals 0, the left-hand side would be 0 because everything would be 0, right? And then the right-hand side would be negative ln absolute value of 1 minus 0, which is ln 1 plus c, but ln1 is 0, so this would be c. And since left-hand side equals the right-hand side, c would be 0, which means we don't need c. Okay, why did we write it though? You never know. We might need it, or it might be something different from 0, right? Great. Now, this is the million-dollar question. How do we go from this to our sum, right? This is what we have so far, and our sum is... 2 plus 3x over 2 plus 4x squared over 3 dot dot dot. 
Should we differentiate it? Should we multiply by two? Well, multiplying by two kind of makes sense because you're gonna get two x and then you can differentiate it. But guess what? If you differentiate, you're gonna go back to the infinite geometric series, which is not gonna be helpful. Because notice that the coefficients here are not always one, right? They're kind of numbers in the form n plus one over n. And two can also be written as two over one and multiply by x to the power zero. So by using the sigma notation, you can actually write this in a different form. Like what? You can basically write it like this. Using sigma, I have the x to the power for n equals 2. This is going to be like if I start with n equals 1 to infinity, I need to get a 2 from here. So it's going to be like n plus 1 over n, which gives me 2 for n equals 1. 3 over 2 for n equals 2, 4 over 3 for n equals 3. Does that make sense? So n equals 1 means the first term. Nice. But what about the power of x? You need to get x to the power 0 for n equals 1. So this needs to be x to the power n minus 1. So this is how you can express it in sigma form. It's also helpful because sometimes Wolfram Alpha doesn't understand the dot, dot, dot. Sometimes it does, sometimes it doesn't. So in case that happens, you can always use the sigma. And instead of sigma, you can just say sum of blah, 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 n equals 1 to infinity. And sometimes put this expression in parentheses to make sure that Wolfram Alpha uh, in, interprets it as a single entity or whatever. Anyways, just got to be careful with your prompt because notice that in some of my videos I showed it, Wolfram Alpha doesn't understand every query. Okay? And I sometimes just make it Kind of a little vague on purpose, so from Alpha can't get it, right? Okay, there's some competition. So, this is what we have so far. Again, the question is, how do we go from this to this? Got to be smart, okay? Use what you have. So, we have this, right? With the integral we got that, didn't we? ln minus ln 1 minus x. Okay, I don't need absolute value. You know why? Because x is less than 1, so we're good. Okay, 1 minus x is always positive. Now, we need to get 2x and then 3x over 2, right? So to get that, I'm thinking, if I add an x to it, I get 2x. If I add an x squared to it, I get 3x squared over 2. But wait a minute, your sum starts with 2, not 2x. And the second term is 2x over 2, but that can be taken care of. Look at this. We can go ahead and write our infinite geometric series again. Wait a minute. This is not the same one. I'm missing one here. Where is the one, right? We don't have a one here. One is missing. So let's make it dotted, okay? We need a one. Okay, so here's what we can do. Write the whole formula, which is one over one minus x, and then just subtract one from it because you're missing the one. You see that? That's a ghost, right? It doesn't exist, okay? So we can kind of handle it that way. And that is equal to actually, oh, you can also look at it this way. There's another way to look at it. Let me show you. You can factor out x, and you would still be getting your infinite geometric series, and that would be just x multiplied by 1 over x. And if you make a common denominator here, you'll get the same thing. So in other words, let's erase all of that, and replace this with x over 1 minus x. I'm not erasing the ghost because it doesn't exist anyways, right? So now we're going to go ahead and add these two things. Now take a look. This is where mathematics happens, or just mathematics. <laughs> x plus x is 2x. This is 3x squared over 2. This is 4x cubed over 3, dot, dot, dot. It's x over 1 minus x minus ln 1 minus x. Wait a minute. I need 2. No worries. We can factor out an x, and that'll be taken care of. Nice and smooth, right? Again, this is infinite, but we're going to be doing what? We're going to be dividing everything by x. We're so close, right? So our sum, the desired sum, is this divided by x, which is 1 over 1 minus x, minus ln 1 minus x divided by x. And that should be it. And let's go ahead and check Wolfram Alpha, see if it can solve a problem like this. What do you think? Here we go. Ta da da da. Well, from Alpha can do it because I use the sigma sum notation.
end. This brings us to the end of this video. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time with another video. Until then, be safe. Take care and bye-bye.